Alrighty, so today we are in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and we are shooting with the Lomo Instant Square Glass. I've been testing this camera out for a while now, and this is the official review. So, let's go. So this camera, known as the Lomo Instant Square Glass, is made by Lomography. And it is a dual format instant camera with a glass lens, people. How cool is that? And a glass lens usually means sharper photos. It has a focal length of 95 millimeters, which is a 45 millimeter equivalent. It can do multiple exposures and it has apertures of F10 and F22. It takes two CR2 batteries, or uh, it also takes a CR2025 battery for the remote. It has a built-in flash, and uh, the shutter speed is from 1 1 25th to eight seconds in auto mode, and it can go up to 30 seconds in bulb mode. It is a perfect day for Instax photography because it is sunny and bright, which works really well with a Lomo Instant Square Glass. Although, in really bright situations, you do have to put it at minus one exposure compensation. So here we are in um, one of my favorite spots in Portsmouth to come to see the river or the bay. This camera, once you get used to it, and once you get used to like its quirks and stuff, it's amazing and it takes super sharp images, uh, as long as you remember to put the focus to its appropriate zone. What I also want to do to test this camera is the Lomo Instant Square Glass can shoot Instax Mini in addition to Instax Square. I don't know if you got any of that because the tractor started. It's so rude of them to start their work when I'm filming. <laughs> okay, so I just managed to take this off and all you need to do is just take it off and push in this little bit when it's on the camera. This is the mini bag and this will go in. Hello. So the, that part. I can't shake the simplest feeling beyond the ghost. We stand on the opposite shore. Hello, no I reach through mysterious ceilings. My holy hope. I look for the things I... All right, so now we are ready to shoot the Instax Mini on the SQ Square. <laughs> um, I wish it also did wide. That would be cool if you had one Fujifilm Instax camera that shot all the different formats. All right, let's see how bad this framing can be. For all in this, I stand alone. Show me where the ending goes. Honest, honestly don't. I should be the last to know All in this I stand alone Show me where the ending goes Honest, honestly don't So if you have your subject in the center of the frame It's gonna go left But you, that means you have to go further right
Okay, so two other things that I need to test on this camera. There's the splitzer lens attachment. Uh, there's also the close-up lens attachment. I am doing a lot of shots on the wide-angle lens because I just love the framing for that. So uh, let's see how those go. Did you just start again? Yes. <laughs> no. Yes. So I just took the first half, which is the Christmas tree, and now I'm going to switch this around. So I'm going to shut off the top half. I'm going to take one of the coffee shots. And that's on the multiple exposure setting. So once you're done with multiple exposure, because you can do as many exposures as you want, then you just hit the multiple exposure button and it ejects. Even if I'm falling down, I will keep on searching for my doing this stuff. I've got a multiple exposure minus one. So now, the other diagonal. focusing distance on this camera is 0.8 meters but the portrait lens allows you to focus up to 0.4 meters or 50 centimeters so we're gonna take some close-up shots you can say I lost my mind I will keep on holding my head high even if the sky is falling down Okay, so I shot most of this video in Portsmouth. Uh, I'll, sh I'll show you all the results from Portsmouth. That was a lot of fun. But before that, I had taken it to Franklin and Tilton to do some more shots. So I'll show you uh, some video from there. And then I did some more tests uh, at home uh, to check the like how the camera performs with flash in a really dark setting. So stay tuned for that. Uh, and then after that, I'm gonna wrap up with some of my concluding thoughts. All right, excuse the hat hair, but um, we are here in Franklin, New Hampshire, and we are taking photos with the instant cameras that I have. So I have the Lomo Instant Square. I took a lot of photos in Tilton downtown with that. So let's get shooting. No rest. No, no. I've been down so long that my mind can't get no rest. No, no. This ain't easy, darling. Cause the devil's on my trail. wrap this video up with some ending thoughts and uh, conclusions and a few tips on what I've learned about how best to shoot this camera because this camera is amazing and I love it uh, but it definitely has some quirks that you need to like familiarize yourself with otherwise you're gonna get shots that are like super dark or super overexposed to be happy and have this camera <laughs> There's a few things, but I would still recommend the camera and I would still recommend getting it. And it is a lot more fun than some of the other Fujifilm Instax cameras that I've had, which are more automatic, uh, like the SQ6 and I have the Neo Classic Mini. And those ones are great and they have reliable, consistent results every time, uh, but they are, they are way more automatic. All right, a few quirks to remember. In sun, minus one. And that's in like super bright sunlight when 
uh, your subject is in the sun. This isn't like pointing towards the sun. Uh, I actually wouldn't recommend that on this camera. <laughs> if it's in mixed lighting I, and you're not using flash, I would definitely use just the regular auto mode. So no exposure compensation plus or minus. So there is this scene uh, in the woods and it was about sunset time. So it's a bit of mixed lighting. It was sunny though. So um, you can see the sun on the trees in this middle exposure. Now the middle exposure came out the best and this was just on plain automatic mode with no flash. And then I did plus one and you can see that this is clearly blown out and the minus one, which you can clearly see is too dark. Now it's, this is like mixed sunny lighting. I'd say if it's really dark or cloudy, you might want to use the plus one exposure compensation or the flash, but also beware of the flash because it doesn't go very far. You have to be pretty close to the camera for the flash to really uh, fill the scene. So just keep that in mind. So framing. So when you look through the viewfinder, there's like a larger square. Some parts of it is grayed out and then there's like a brighter square on the lower right hand side. That brighter square is the one that you would use to frame up your shots for Instax square. Now what I found for Instax mini is actually you can use the whole square to frame that up because the Instax mini framing, when you're looking through the viewfinder, whatever you're shooting, like if you center something in that lower bright square in the viewfinder, it's gonna be a little bit to the left. So you need to move the camera to the right just a slightly. So what I would do is put your subject in the center of the whole frame, including the grayed out parts. You might not be able to see it that great, um, but it, it kind of works. At least that's how I got it to work for me. The wide angle lens is awesome. I love the wide angle lens and the wide angle lens actually saves you a little bit on the framing because you don't have to be um, so precise, I guess, in your framing because <laughs> uh, the wide and but the wide angle lens will sort of blur the photo on the edges just because it's like warped a little bit. So the closer you are to your subject, the more warped the image will be. I think this definitely shows in the uh, shop front image with the Santa. My copy of the Loma Instant Square doesn't close all the way. So I usually just leave the wide angle lens on top of this as sort of like a, uh, to keep the dust out of the real lens. This doesn't have a lens cap. It's supposed to close all the way, but it doesn't. <laughs> it does close all the way if I like press it in. So it should stay there, <laughs> but it doesn't. Oh well. <clears throat> I don't know if maybe the newer versions are better because this version I actually got off eBay and I believe this was one of the Kickstarter versions or something like that. Uh, it's definitely an older, one of the, one of the OG <laughs> instant square glass. Um, so yeah, so I usually keep the wide angle lens on top to protect from dust, so. Definitely have to use the splitzer. I love the splitzer images and I definitely wanna play with this a little bit more. So the splitzer images, it basically blocks out one half of the image. So you can do really creative multiple exposures, but it also has a little, an extra gold tab. So you could do quarter squares or eighth squares, any piece of the pie, any way you want to break down the, the, um, the circle <laughs> of the image. I know it's a square image, um, but the splitzer is circular. And so it's a really creative tool to play with. And it was a lot of fun. And I really like the images that come out. And it's really nice that the multiple exposure mode allows you to do as many exposures as you want. It's not just a double exposure where you can only do two. You can do as many as you want. Um, you just have to remember to press the button. And then when you're done, you press it again and it ejects. Okay, so the close-up lens was very interesting. Basically, it allows you to get closer to your subject. So the closest focusing distance here is 0.8. And when I was reading on the Mography, they said that it's about an arm's length away from your subject. And then some, somewhere else said 50 centimeters and somewhere else said 0.4 meters. Um, but when I was shooting, I was way closer than that to the subjects. I was about a foot and a half away, which is much shorter than my arm. So I'm still not entirely sure what the right distance is for the portrait lens. So actually, because if you use your arm and then your, your subject is like here, for example, and then you pull out the camera, right? 
that's going to cut down about like a foot. So then that would be about the right distance from when I was shooting, when I got the subjects in focus. Uh, so it's, it's really cool. It's um, great to try out for portraits. The only thing I noticed is some flaring on the lens uh, because I was pointing it at like a reflective window screen and it was very sunny. Um, so there, there might be some flaring with it, but it's still fun and definitely, definitely worth getting to play around with. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of fun. Um, the only thing I'd say is I did give it to my brother to have a go with as a total beginner, not knowing anything about photography. And it was a dark, cloudy day <laughs> and it didn't do very well. Uh, the, sh the shutter speed was too slow, so we got blurry images if they were properly exposed. The flash didn't extend far enough to, to where he wanted it to on uh, some of the shots. Um, he did get a couple good ones, but I would definitely say this isn't the easiest camera to hand over to someone and just say, here, shoot it, unless you preset the settings for them. Um, like if you're in a sunny setting and you have to preset it with minus one to make sure you don't overexpose it. Uh, if you're in dark settings, this camera is really going to struggle. Um, so you either have to use the flash with a close up subject or the plus one EV. So I did do a little experiment with the flash uh, in really low light on some flowers. What I found is, so I did a series of these images and the first one, the flash went off and yet the image is completely dark. So I don't know if that was just a fluke or if it was because there was ambient light on. Um, I don't know. So what I did then was I did a multiple exposure and I used, um, I don't think I used the flash for, for the first one. Uh, and that one came, that one actually came out, so, but it's very dark. Um, and I think I might've even used like the plus one for that one. Um, I'll put them up on the screen and I put notes on the actual Instax so you can see what I did, like plus one or with flash or ambient lighting and, and whatever. Uh, Cause it was in a dark spot in the kitchen. Um, sorry, it was in a dark spot on the dining room table, but I had the kitchen light on. So there was a little bit of ambient light coming on the subject. So the multiple exposure kind of came out, but it was still a little bit dark. And then I did a multiple exposure, one without flash and one with flash. And that did come out um, and that looked kind of cool. But something interesting that I've noticed in some images that I've got with the flash is that there are three dots, <laughs> like three white dots on the image. Uh, and I don't know what those are from. It doesn't happen in all of the images. Uh, oh, and some of the some of the other images have a little sort of like up in the top corner. There's a little like cauliflower thing there. And I don't know. I don't know what's that what that is from. I don't know if that's from the camera or if it's from the film, but just something I noticed. It didn't happen in all of the images and it doesn't happen on a regular basis, but it did happen in quite a few. So if you know what that is, let me know. Then what I did was I turned off the ambient light. So the subject, the flowers were in complete darkness. And I set the focus and I used the flash and it came out really nice. So I'm not sure if the camera is it's adjusting for the ambient light when it uses the flash as well, it probably is. Uh, but it, somehow it makes it darker. <laughs> Whereas when you have the subject in complete darkness and you use the flash, it comes out great. So it was an interesting little test that I did with the flowers because um, I was trying to get a handle on how this works at night with the flash. It's definitely a camera where you're going to want to buy quite a few packs to test it out and get a get a handle of it and see where you like shooting it best. Um, don't get frustrated at first. <laughs> Just have patience because I did at first and I was like, oh, this is garbage. <laughs> um, but then I really started learning the best ways to shoot it um, and taking notes. And that's why I wanted to do this review just to share my notes and stuff for this camera. I mean, there's there's a bunch of reviews on YouTube on this camera already and they're really good. My favorite one probably being by Just Another Chris. I mean, his channel is dedicated to instant photography. So um, anything instant, you'll find it there. And he's really good at presenting and um, his editing style is very engaging. Uh, so yeah, definitely recommend checking out his channel and the Lomo Instant Square review.
So yeah, have patience. This camera requires patience. <laughs> but once you master it, it's my, I've got my favorite images out of any instant camera ever on this one. Yeah, so I recommend it. All right, well, I think uh, I'll end it there. <laughs> yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments below on this camera. Let me know if you've ever used it before or if you've ever thought about using it. Bye.